What a joy to be together this Sunday morning. We're glad that you're here. A couple reminders, and that is next Sunday we'll be honoring our seniors in this service. So if you have any seniors you want to be honored, you need to call in the beginning of the week so we can make sure we have their names and information. Anyone graduating from any kind of program, high school, college, masters, uh, a military program, or whatever, uh, trade school programs, whatever people are doing, we want to honor and celebrate. There's a, a mistake in the bulletin. It says um, a charge conference on Wednesday, June the 26th. It's actually Tuesday, June the 26th. So make sure people have that correction there. And um, we have a, a really wonderful program. There's a church in Lewiston, Maine, which has a... Uh, a food pantry and what they noticed over the last few years is the people who are coming for the food pantry are for the most part people who um, who are either migrants or they are new citizens or new residents of the country or they are refugees and therefore their English isn't very good. So what they have been doing is they've been distributing children's books to families and that's been a way for their families to learn English together. Uh, you know children's books are basic books to read and the children and the families are reading them and uh, the parents are reading them and together they're learning English so we want to help that process and we want to encourage these families as they get acclimated so we're going to be collecting children's books over the summer. So if you have a children's book that was a favorite, family favorite, or ones that your children have outgrown or grandchildren no longer need, or if they're gently used, or if you at the store you see a children's book, please pick them up and bring them to the church. And on September the 16th, we're going to collect them all summer. And on September 16th, we're going to load up a truck that we can take to Lewiston, Maine, and and celebrate that and honor that. So we encourage you to participate in that. Some other announcements is uh, St. Paul Soup Kitchen. We have the opportunity to participate in that. The sign up is on the bulletin board. Uh, please make note of that. Uh, and remember on Father's Day worship times change and this service will become the 930 service. So if you're here at 11 I'll love to see you but you and I'll have a one-on-one -on -one service and um, you won't get to see your friends. So you can still uh, buy soda for the 4th of July booth. And there's sign-ups for both the 4th of July booth and for Sermon Summer Serendipity. Summer Serendipity is our Sunday school program uh, in the summer. So we encourage you to uh, connect to that as you're able and uh, to sign up for that. There's other things in the bulletin you may want to call attention to. The last one I'm going to mention today is that... Um, if you will be away some weeks in the summer, uh, we ask that you you uh, go to our website and you sign up for those, summer, those Sundays to give online or maybe give online through the summer. Uh, that way, even when you're gone, uh, your uh, generous donation is consistently given at the times you would normally give it so that we can continue to um, meet our obligations over the summer. Now we invite you to open your hearts and minds and spirits to Christ as we worship the God who created us, the God who loves us, and the God who sustains us. rise for the morning's call to worship. Come to worship Almighty God. We lift our song, our prayers, our praise. Come to honor Christ Jesus. We offer Christ our hearts, our minds, our spirits. Come to be filled with the spirit of the living God. Breathe in us, breath of God. Hallelujah. 
This morning's opening hymn is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling on page 384 in the red hymnals and on the screens. be seated. Let's join together in the opening prayer as printed in the bulletin and on the screens. Most holy God, we await the touch of your spirit with eagerness. We ask that you enter the lives of each one of us today, refreshing and renewing and healing us with the power of your loving spirit that we may live with purpose and enthusiasm and courage after the manner of Jesus, who was truly whole. Amen. Let us all join together as one Christian community and pass the love of Jesus to your neighbor.
page 12 of the Red Hymnal, you'll find the, um, today's prayer of confession and pardon. You'll also find it on the screen. Christ our Lord invites us to his table, all who love him, and all who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Continuing as a community of Christian faith and love, let us join together in the Nicene Creed. You may find that on page 880 in the red hymnal or again on the screens. Let us join together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and in his kingdom we will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism and for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This morning's scripture passage is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 2, verse 23, through chapter 3, verse 6. And it is in the, uh, your Bible, in the pew, page 34, and also on the screens. One Sabbath, he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look! Why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, 
Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him, how to destroy him. This is the word of God. When you see a wet paint sign, what do you do? Are you one of those people who touches it? Maybe it's the fact that the sign is telling you not to do it that makes you want to reach out a finger and touch it. Or perhaps you're overcome with curiosity. What's going to happen? Will I get paint on my finger? Will I mess up the paint job? Maybe you just want to see if the sign is obsolete. Maybe the paint is dry and the sign hasn't been taken down. But you want to find out, don't you? Then there are other people. People who see the sign and want to obey. After all, it was put there for a reason, so it should be left alone. The paint is probably wet, and if you touch it, you will get paint on your finger, and you may ruin someone's hard work. Besides, what kind of world would it be if people just obeyed signs only when they felt like it? No, rules are rules. Today it's the wet paint sign, tomorrow it's the no trespassing sign, and then the next day, well, it's all downhill. It's the road to anarchy. So what kind of person are you? The kind who touches the wall to see if the paint is wet or the kind who doesn't. I'm the kind of person who obeys a sign. Rules are there for a reason and should be obeyed. I've always been that kind of person. So when I come across a passage like today's, I am torn. It just doesn't sit right with me. Why did Jesus allow his followers to pick grain? Couldn't they have made arrangements the day before to have food prepared for them and kept for the Sabbath so they could obey the Sabbath law? After all, this isn't some small rule that they are breaking. This isn't a touching a wall which has a wet paint sign. No, this is a big rule. Honor the Sabbath. Keep it holy. This is a rule straight out of the Ten Commandments. This is one of those rules that made it on God's top ten list. Carved on a stone and given to Moses on Mount Sinai. We read about it in Exodus 20. It is number three on the list. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For in six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath for the Lord. You shall not do any work. Yet here Jesus is flouting the law, allowing his disciples to go into the field and pick the grain. What's going on here? The key to understanding this passage, indeed to understanding much of the conflict that Jesus had with the religious leaders throughout his ministry, is found in Jesus' words in verse 27. The Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. The Ten Commandments, indeed all the laws that we have received from God, were not random ideas that God has given us to restrict our lives. They're not given to fulfill some divine desire to control us. Rather, they're given to make our lives better, richer, fuller. 
The, ten, the commandment on the Sabbath was given because we need a day of rest each week. A day to stop, rest our minds and bodies. We need a day to renew our spirits through worship. This isn't just a good idea. It is vital for our health, the well-being. Study after study has shown that taking a Sabbath day of rest decreases stress, improves physical health, and even improves long-term memory. Yes, honoring the Sabbath is a good idea. But the problem comes when the rule becomes more important than the person. The good religious leaders of Jesus' day and many good people today were so caught up in following the rules that they became more important than people. When this happens, the rule often becomes detrimental instead of helpful. Life draining instead of life giving. Obeying the Sabbath rule became so important that you couldn't even relieve people suffering on the Sabbath. That was too much work. You couldn't bind their wounds and heal their afflictions. Too much work. You couldn't care for the lonely or give hope to the lost. Too much work. And the process of honoring the rules, people got lost. People got hurt. The rule which was good had gone astray. It had become too important. No, the needs of people come first and that means that sometimes you've got to break the rules. So Jesus had his disciples pick some grain and then Jesus reached out in love and healed someone. Jesus was offering a corrective. People are more important than rules. Jesus explained this when he was asked what the greatest commandment was. He answered love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the laws and prophets hang on these two commandments. What is the greatest rule? Love. What is the core of all rules? Love. Whenever the rules sit in the way of love, then they have gone astray. They need a corrective. Whenever we are caught between obeying the rule and loving as God loves, then our choice is clear. Love. Bishop Curry in his recent sermon at the royal wedding put it this way. We are made by a power of love and our lives were meant and are meant to be lived in that love. That's why we are here. Ultimately the source of love is God. The source of all of our lives. The New Testament says it this way. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. And those who are loved are born of God and know God. Those who do not love do not know God. Why? Because God is love. There's power in love. <clears throat> There's power in love to help and heal when nothing else can. There is power in love to lift up and liberate when nothing else will. There's power in love to show us the way to live. Sometimes the rules stand in the way of love. They're shaped by those who have power so that they can keep power. They are formed to reinforce and give power to people's prejudices. They aren't about God's way. And when that happens, they need a corrective. Love. 
Why did Jesus allow his disciples to pick grain on the Sabbath? Because the law had gone astray. It was no longer about serving the love of God and building up people. It had become self-serving and was tearing people down. Jesus was calling attention to the law because he was about to offer a corrective. He was about to act loving. He was about to act with compassion. He was about to heal a man with a withered hand. He could not bear to allow that man to go another day suffering. He would not allow the Sabbath law to prohibit him from alleviating the burden of the man. The Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. That is the role of the church, to be the healing presence of God, the presence that builds up, the presence that offers the divine corrective of love to a broken world and a hurting people, even when the rules say no. The church is the community of God, a community which puts people first and acts with love and compassion. The church is the community of Christ who loved so deeply that he went to the cross to transform the world. The church is the community of grace. And isn't grace the divine corrective of love that offers healing in the face of the law which seeks to condemn? The church doesn't always get it right. But when it does, we have the power to transform lives through the love of God. As we prepare to receive communion and celebrate the gift of redemption received in Jesus' sacrificial love, I share with you a story told by Bishop Curry about his parents. He writes, Sometime in the 1940s, after the Second World War in the United States, Jim Crow was alive and well. Segregation and separation of the races was still the law in much of the land and the actual practice in other areas, even if it wasn't technically the law there. The armed forces had not yet been desegregated. The Tuskegee Airmen were still a unit. Brown versus the Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas had not yet been issued. Long before Rosa Park had ever stood up for Jesus by sitting down on that bus in Montgomery, long before Jackie Robinson was playing baseball, long before Martin Luther Jr. King Jr. was still in seminary, an African-American couple went to church. They went to church one Sunday morning. They were the only people of color there. But there they were on America's segregated Sabbath. The only people of color at Holy Communion. When the time came for communion, the woman went up to receive and the man stayed in his seat. As he watched how communion was done, he realized that everyone was drinking out of the same cup. The man looked around the room, then he looked at his fiancée, then he sat back in his pew as if to say, this ought to be interesting. The priest came by. Would the priest really give his fiance communion from the common cup? Would the next person at the rail drink from that cup after she did? Would others on down the line drink from the same cup? The people before her drink from the cup, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Another person drink. The person right before her drink. Drink this in remembrance of Christ's blood that was shed for you. Then she drink. Now was the moment her fiancé was waiting for. Would the next person after her drink from that cup he watched the next person drink 
the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ which is shed for you then the next person drink and on down the line it went people drinking from the common cup after his fiance like this was the most normal thing in the world and he said to himself any church which black and whites drink out of the same cup knows something about the gospel. We are here to change the world with the power of love. That is the call of the church to change the world through the power of God's love. To love like God. To live the law of love. To love the Lord with all of our hearts and souls and minds and our neighbors like ourselves. All the laws and the prophets are hung on these two. To love. And in loving, we fulfill the law. And we serve our God. Amen. As we prepare our hearts to receive Holy Communion later in the service, I invite you to settle your minds and to open your spirits and to quiet in your souls. As we prepare, we will sing together. Open my eyes that I may see. Please rise as you're able. Number five, 454. And it's also on the screens. seated as we as we enter into a time of prayer I have several announcements to make I will start off with the joy of our graduates who are um, this day at noon I believe graduating from Wilmington High School and the graduates from the other schools the tech and other places that are coming over the next week or so and we give thanks for that and we give thanks for their life transition, even as their parents and grandparents smile and rejoice and feel a little sad that this transition is happening. A uh, mixture of joy and concern, uh, the Holman family who have been a part of our church for the last six or seven years are moving. 
this was their last Sunday with us, so um, we got a chance to say goodbye to them at the uh, 9 o'clock service. If you see them through town over the next week or so before they move, give them a hug and tell them that we will miss them. I'm sad to say that uh, we received word this week that Jean Jacobus has passed away. Um, her service will be sometime in September as a memorial service. The date has not yet been chosen. Um, the family has not yet decided whether or not the service will be a private service for just the family or open to the community. But either way, they are planning a collation which they will invite the community to come. So as the time gets closer, I will let you know that information so that you uh, can gather with the family and let them know how much you love Jean and how important and special she was. We also keep in mind uh, Jenny's mother as she continues to heal and ask for God's blessings. And I know there's other prayers in our hearts. We see with joy that Lynn is here this morning and that she is out of the hospital and doing well enough to come here this morning. We pray for her every day that she gains strength and goes from strength to strength. Now let us enter into a moment of prayer. O oh God of love and grace, whose love has transformed our lives and transforms the world. O oh Christ, who came to us in sacrificial love. O oh Spirit, which dwells in us and propels us in grace to share your love, we come to you this morning because we need your strength. We need your grace to fortify us so that we can go out and love for you. For we live in a world which is desperate for that grace. We live in a world where people put their own needs first and neglect the needs of others. We live in a world where the lost and the lonely and the hurt are shunned aside or oppressed so that those in power can have theirs and have ours and have the other person's. And we seek in that, O oh God, to be a transforming presence and ask for your grace and peace to settle upon us. Teach us to love like you love. Teach us to live like you lived. O oh, most gracious God, we ask you to be with the prayers that we have raised this morning and those prayers of our hearts. We ask for your grace to transform, your hope to fortify, and your peace to settle on us. We pray these things in the name of Christ our Savior as we share his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in power. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us receive our gifts, our tithes, our offerings.
let us pray together. Holy God, you call us by name and invite us into the life of faithfulness and obedience. When we don't hear your voice or let other voices drown out your call, you still persist. As we offer our gifts this morning, may we bring not only our wealth, but our whole lives to your altar, ready to listen to where you would send us for the sake of your kingdom and Christ's coming. Amen. As we prepare to receive Holy Communion this morning, we remember that it is Christ's table, not our table. And therefore, all who Christ invites to come to the table is invited. That means everyone here among us is invited. Us. From the short-term member to the long-term member to the first-time guest to, the, to everyone, from the youngest to the most senior, it is an open table. We are receiving communion this day by intention. We'll come by the center aisle, receive the bread and cup, and then go by the side aisles back to your pews. We will start with the choir, who will receive first. And then all will be open to receive. Uh, if you need a special uh, gluten-free bread, we will have that on the side of the station over here and special cup for that so that you may receive that as well. We ask those who are um, receiving communion uh, to come up when I ask. I mean those who are serving to come up when I ask and then everyone will receive together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By his baptism and suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the, my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ one with each other and one in ministry to all the world and to Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church all honor and glory is yours almighty God now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf we who are many are one body for we all partake in the one loaf the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ
The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Invite those who are helping to serve to come. The gift that's been prepared, let us receive in joy. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please rise as you're able for our final hymn, number 57. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. lead you into the world. May the presence of Christ embolden you to serve. And may the spirit of God's grace inspire you and lead you. That you may live as Christ lived and love as Christ loves. Amen.